you're, you're going to be for your entire life unable to understand what it actually takes in order to create uh, to create human order. I mean, the 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 the, the you know the. But various people have noticed that the European, that that many of the European leaders uh, are are unmarried and don't have children, um, and the uh, the 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 situation in which um, young people don't learn how to they they don't learn how to govern, they don't learn how to uh, to be a king and a queen in their own homes, they don't know how to govern a family, they don't know how to how to hold it together. Uh, despite the you know the incredible pain and difficulties that 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 often takes place uh, between men and women and and, uh, and and children are you know children are you know they're sometimes fun but they're sometimes incredibly difficult incredibly painful to raise this this whole concept that every every young man and woman who can do it must take the responsibility to bring life into the world to create the world anew, to try to build up on the basis of what's been inherited, to try to make it better than what it was in, in previous generations. That, that view, I, th I, th I think in, in many ways, that's like a, the, the bedrock um, Jewish and Christian view, which says, uh, you know, we're not, sla we're not slaves to the gods, we're, we're partners in creating this world, but that, that means we have an obligation to do the act of creation. And the, the, the most fundamental act of creation is creating a family. Once you've done that, then, uh, you know, you, you, you were hinting to this, that then I think you can also learn to create congregations, to uphold uh, uh, nations. All of that flows from the first step of very young people taking responsibility for creating, you know, b basically their own little world in a family. Just like physical exercise, daily spiritual exercise is critical to your well-being, especially in a world where attacks on faith and religion are happening all around us every day. There's no better time for a daily habit of prayer than during this season of Lent with Hallow, the number one Christian prayer app in the U.S. and the number one Catholic app in the world. With Hallow, you can pray every single day leading up to Easter alongside world-famous Catholics and Christians like Jim Caviezel, Father Mike Schmitz, and even Mark Wahlberg. Dive deep into scripture and the second most read Christian book of all time, The Imitation of Christ. You'll learn how to become a better individual through prayer, fasting, and giving in spite of today's broken world. Download the app for free at hallow.com Jordan. Set prayer reminders, invite others to pray with you, and track your progress along the way. Get an exclusive three-month free trial at hallow.com Jordan. That's hallow.com Jordan. Well, there is no more profound responsibility than that. And so it's an initiation into profound responsibility. I mean, one of the things that happens to a parent that, and I think it's very difficult for this to happen if you don't become a parent, is that once you're a parent, there is definitely someone in your life who's more important than you are. Right, so your, your orientation to the world well, I would say it matures properly, and it matures under the force of moral obligation, fundamentally. You have this person now who's, for better or worse, almost entirely dependent on your not-so-tender mercies, you and your wife, and who's subject to all of your trials and tribulations and inadequacies. And if you have any sense at all, that wakes you up as much as anything will. And without that, I think it's very difficult to shed the constraints of hedonistic adolescence. That's not good for right, people, you, just, you know, it's not good for people. If you, you just go, so go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's exactly true. I think I, I, as you said, you, you can't, you can't in a lot of ways, you can't actually mature uh, until you've created and are the, uh, the government of the, uh, uh, of a household and the alternative that, that, uh, that sort of mainstream liberalism gives us this uh, the, the, this view that you know you, when when you reach eighteen or twenty years old you're a you're a rational individual and you know now you can do whatever you want you can and usually doing whatever you want we can see in young people that doing whatever you want means that th they get too scared to get married 
they get too scared to have children. They, the, the, uh, even, I'm, I'm talking about something that even affects, even affects Orthodox religious communities. You can see it very, very clearly that, that, the, um, uh, that they look at, at, um, at these responsibilities as a kind of, uh, w- with, with terrible fear, as though it's like, a, like an enslavement, something, something they, need, they need to spend another five years and another 10 years and another five years, get more degrees. You know, they need to keep preparing in order to be ready to do it. And th- that, that's the, the opposite of the traditional view that says, that says take the responsibility and, and then live up to it. You'll grow by living up to it. You'll become a complete person, as the rabbis say. You complete yourself by entering, taking the responsibility of marriage and children. And the, the alternative of is, is adolescence that's extended forever. What, you think that when you're, that, that when you're 35 years old and, uh, and, and now you're going to start looking to get married, it's going to be easier to get married. You, you, you'll, you'll actually be more capable of it than you were when you were 23. I, I, don't, I don't think that's true at all. I, I, I think what you learn during those extra 10 or 15 years of adolescence is, is to, to just care for yourself instead of to learn how to create mm-hmm. something, to learn well, how that, to, that to, also, to command something. That idea also highlights in some sense both the practical necessity and the inevitability of faith or or the lack thereof i mean many things in your life you have to throw yourself into without first knowing that you can do it and i i don't mean to do that in an impulsive and foolish manner like heedless of all risks i mean that when you get married you don't know if it's going to work and in some sense that's even a foolish question because the issue is that when you decide to get married it's the first and foremost decision among 50,000 decisions that are going to determine whether or not you can stay married. And you can boil that down to a question like, did I marry the right person? And the answer to that is always no. And they didn't marry the right person either. And because neither of you are the right person in your current unbelievably flawed condition. And so, but you throw yourself into it thinking that having faith that you can manage it, and also having faith that the alternative, that no matter how dismal the reality, the alternative is likely to be far worse. And I would say the same thing is true on the child-rearing front, which is, as you pointed out, it's difficult. It isn't obvious that you're prepared or that extra preparation is really going to help you. But what's the alternative to the difficulty? One of the things I love about the story of Abraham one of the things I think that makes it such a profound story is that Abraham is really characterized by quite the protracted adolescence according to the beginning of the story. He's quite old when God finally convinces him to get the hell out of his tent and to get out there in the world. And God in that story is definitely manifest, manifests himself as the call to adventure, even to the pathologically underdeveloped, the call to adventure. And course, Abraham just steps into any number of catastrophes as soon as he leaves the confines of his tent and his and his father's home. But the story is a triumph in its totality because despite the fact that he encounters tyranny and the likely loss of his wife at the hands of people who are essentially tyrants and starvation and war and all of the catastrophes of life, He has a great adventure, and that's the adventure, as far as I can tell, it's something like the adventure of truth and dedication and responsibility. And that's very seldom marketed, you know, by conservatives to young people as an adventure, right? And you said their default position is often to regard these strictures of community as, what would you call it, impediments and impositions on their hedonic freedom. But there's very little of value in that hedonic freedom, and all of the adventure in life, as far as I can tell, is to be found, weirdly enough, in truth and responsibility. Yep, I, 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 I completely agree. You, you, have, um, uh, you have God telling Abraham, look, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you an opportunity uh, to become a great nation, to 
uh, uh, become a, a, a great tradition, to become, a, to, to become a, a teacher of all the peoples in the world. But, you know, that's the biggest adventure that, you know, that the prophets could imagine was setting out to become a teacher to the entire world and to, and to create a great nation that would influence the whole world and, 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 and would be in covenant with God. They, the, the prophets can't imagine a, a larger scale adventure than that. And yet the whole thing pivots around, you take a wife, you have to have a child, you have to raise that child. That, that involves hardship, that involves difficulty. And you know, there's all of these descriptions of Ab Abraham's adventures. And, and you know, it, it, it takes many generations until you can see the consequences of what, of, of, of you know, the full consequences of what he did. But the first step is taking responsibility, as you say. And now we have to ask, we have to, I mean, now we're talking about, you know, tens of millions of young people and not so young people who are beginning to realize that, you know, that, that, that a career, meaning, you know, like the, your, 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 your place within the corporate economy, your, you know, which cubicle, get, getting to that corner office, that, that's nowhere near the adventure of cr cr creating a family which is creating a little nation which then has the opportunity to grow if you do it right.